When you use the Hewlett Packard 10B2 Plus financial calculator for the first time, you'll see that it displays only two digits past the decimal point. I recommend that you see all the digits possible past the decimal point. To do that, you're going to press this reddish orange shift button and then the um, equal sign which says DASP underneath it. And then I'm going to press the number of digits I want to see. So I want to see eight. Uh, that's the maximum, and so now all, I'll be able to see all the digits uh, up to the eighth place. Next, we want to make sure the calculator is set to one period per year. To check what its period per year setting is, we'll press the shift button again, and then the C below it. And you see that it flashed 12P slash YR. We do not want 12 periods per year. We want to set it to one period per year, so we'll press the one, shift, and then up here where it says PMT, you see it also says uh, P slash YR, also in red. And after I did the shift PYR, the one is now stored as uh, the periods per year. To verify that that took, we're going to do shift C again, and now it flashes one period per year. The last thing to make sure about is we don't want to see any letters showing up in this display. Particularly, we do not want it to say begin. Now if it does say begin, it will look like this. So you see down here uh, in the middle of the zeros, it says um, beg, B-E-G for begin. This uh, would indicate that it will interpret everything we put into the calculator, every number we put into the calculator, as occurring at the beginning of a period as opposed to the end. But we almost always assume that cash flows occur at the ends of periods. So we want this BEG letters to go away so that it's set to end. So to set it to end, I'm going to do the shift and then hit the um, BEG slash end button which is over here, and then we see the beg letters go away. So after you have uh, made sure that you have these three settings, you're ready to dive into your problems. The first kind of problem that you would most likely do in a finance class would be involving these this top row of buttons. Uh, in other calculators, this would be called the, the time value of money or TVM solver functions. And it works very intuitively. Let's suppose that I want to know how much I'd save up in five years. So the N stands for number of periods. So I'm going to put in five and store that with N. And let's suppose that it goes into an account that earns 10%. So I'll put in 10 and then I'll press Y slash YR for interest rate per year. Notice that the interest rate is entered as a percent. So if it's 10%, you'll enter one zero. Let's suppose I start out with $100 in my account. So I put in 100 and then press PV. Now I'm doing a lump sum problem, which means I'm putting in money now and I just want to see what it would be worth in this account uh, at some uh, date in the future. I will not put any value in for PMT for what I'm doing right now. The PMT stands for payment and that is when you have a stream of multiple cash flows in the future. So that's not the scenario here. The default value would be zero. If you want to make sure that zero is stored in there, you can put in zero and then PMT. And then finally, we're ready to solve for the future value. And I simply press the button of what I want to solve for, which is FV. When I press FV, I see that the future value is $161.05 with a negative sign in front of it. Now the future value of a positive number is positive. The calculator adds this negative sign uh, because it's basically saying if you received $100 at period zero, because we put in positive 100, you would uh, owe 161.05. So it would be interpreting this as a loan. Uh, but just realize that's how the calculator's thinking. But if you're just using this to make the 
a calculation go faster than using a formula, just realize that you need to drop that negative sign. And then keep this in mind when you're solving for other things like interest rate or n, number of periods, because if you're solving for either of these, you would have to enter values for both PV and FV, and you'll need to reverse the sign on one of them, or else you will not get an answer or won't get the correct answer. Uh, before you go on to your next problem, it is a good idea to clear out everything that's stored here in these uh, buttons. So to clear everything, I'm just going to press the shift and then C button again. It flashes what the setting is, which is still one period per year, but now um, zeros are stored for all of these uh, five uh, parameters. Now let's talk about how you would calculate the present value of a stream of cash flows that does not have to follow any pattern. This is often called the uneven cash flow stream problem, or as I've referred, general cash flow stream problem. Uh, so that we would start by listing our cash flows using the CF button. So let's suppose that my first cash flow at period zero is negative 100. So I'm going to press uh, 100, and then I'm going to press the plus minus key to make that negative. And then press CF. Notice the calculator flashes CF zero, meaning the, the cash flow at period zero is negative 100. Now let's suppose that the um, next cash flow is 50. So I'll put in 50, CF. Now that's stored as a period one cash flow. Next cash flow, let's suppose, is 75. So I'll put in 75. Again, CF. Now that's stored as the period two cash flow. And let's suppose we have a uh, we go up to three periods, and the third cash flow is 120. So I'll do 120 and then CF. So we have these four uh, dollar amounts stored from period zero through three. And now we can tell the calculator we want to know the net present value of these four cash flows. Before we can calculate the net present value, we also have to tell the calculator what interest rate to use. So let's suppose that we need to use a 7% interest rate. So we'll put in, uh, press seven, and then you'll press the interest rate key just as we did uh, before. Now seven is stored as the interest rate, and we're ready to solve for the net present value. So you'll see here under this uh, button that has PRC in white and reddish orange, it says NPV. So I'm going to press the shift button, the red orange shift button, and then NPV. And now the calculator is displaying the net present value or NPV of these four cash flows, which is $110.19. Now the nice thing about this calculator is that these dollar amounts are still stored as the period zero through three cash flows. We can calculate other things on the, this cash flow stream. And the last thing we want to go over is how would you calculate the IRR or internal rate of return? So to calculate the IRR, we're going to press the shift button again, the red orange shift button, and then we go to the left of NPV, we see in red orange it says IRR slash YR for in internal rate of return. And we see that the internal rate of return of these four cash flows, uh, and if you had not already entered the cash flows to get the NPV, uh, first, you would follow the steps of entering the cash flows again and then solve for IRR. Remember, whenever you do a new problem, uh, you will want to clear it all out before you begin because you don't want a leftover value from a previous one stored as one of the period cash flows if, if that goes beyond what you're replacing in the next problem.